nice in here there is zero rattling the build quality is exceptional everything feels great and i and i want to just reiterate it's really easy to drive like it, it just is like the steering is very easy you know the transmission shifts very effortlessly the brakes are very progressive the seat is really comfortable i'm telling you like this is this is like such a good dual personality car you know you get a you get almost a supercar or i mean let's be honest i think this is pretty much supercar you know territory right but at the same time you get a nice luxurious car that you could absolutely take you know your husband or your wife or whatever out to dinner in and get there in comfort and then if you want to go ahead and just go ahead and do track mode right here and then give give it some fuel i mean you know things got all the performance in the world i mean how fast do you want to go right that was 110 like it was nothing so love the aston martin vantage really like what aston's done with the f1 edition oh so good god this thing pulls like a freight train hell yeah hats off the aston keep making cars like this Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome back to Driven Nashville. If you're new to our channel, we produce weekly enthusiast-driven car content. And behind me is one of my all-time favorite brands and one of my all-time favorite cars. This is the new Aston Martin Vantage F1. Now before I talk to you about this vehicle, as I only have a couple hours with the car this morning, I wanna just tell you that the Vantage has a special place in my heart specifically. The reason is, is when I was 29 years old, I told my wife, I said, honey, I really wanna have a nice car, you know I'm a car guy, I wanna have my first exotic car. So I did my research and I decided to get a 2009 Aston Martin Vantage. I got a six speed manual, I got a convertible, I got chancel red, black exterior, and I gotta say I had that car for two and a half years, I put about 4,500 miles on it and I absolutely loved it. It was my favorite car maybe I've ever owned. It was fantastic and it didn't give me a single issue, not one issue. I changed the oil, I eventually changed the brakes on it, um, you know, just normal maintenance stuff from driving it. I detailed it every once in a while, right? But it didn't cost me a single issue in any, ex you know, maintenance issues, engine, electrical issues, all these things that people are afraid of, okay? So I just want you to say, if you wanna get an older Vantage like an 09, go for it, it's a good car. Now, this is the number one car I think on the market right now that people are just sleeping on. I have no idea why a GT3 is going for 100 to 125,000 over MSRP right now. It makes zero sense to me. I wanna be very clear. I'm not hating on the GT3 or the GT3 owners, okay? Guys like Chandler's of the world who have them, they're fantastic. You get one in shark blue with a great spec, it's an amazing car. But do not pay 100K over for it. It's just not worth it. You're better off spending about $177,000 in ordering one of these. I mean, look at this car, guys. Is this not the hottest car? I mean, think, I mean, $170,000 and you can get one of these? I mean, come on. This car is for sale right now for 185. It's got a few extra details and whatnot, but that's so much exotic car for the money. Now this is the new F1 edition, and I've, I've reviewed the original Vantage before. They bumped the horsepower of this one up 24 horses. So this is putting about 528 horsepower. Still has about 505 foot-pounds of torque, but look at the restyling. And just check out this color for a second. This is called British Racing Green. This is the same color that their Formula One team uses, hence why they call it the F1 edition. But you can see here, you've got carbon streaks that have been restyled. This is factory carbon. You get the carbon roof. You get the new uh, you know, center line down here. You get a new wing back here. They've done some just general styling cues to make it all match with the spec. These 21 inch wheels, guys, these are the best looking wheels on the market today. I mean, you can get these things diamond finished as well. I mean, God, they look so smoking hot. But just look at it. I mean, the total package of this thing is just sexy. There's really no bad angles on it. 
Now, I, I don't, I'm not gonna be able to have Brian come out today. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take a point of view drive. I'll just spotlight next the engine and a little bit of the interior for you. This is just gonna be more of a point of view uh, video today because guys, I only have two hours with the vehicle. So uh, it's shipping out to Arkansas um, and then it's gonna be coming back. But the interior of this car, you can get all of these extra things here and just deck it out to the nines, right? Now this is the leather in Alcantara. It has the Alcantara roof on it. It has the carbon fiber inlay in, in there. So it's got a couple of extra details. You can see here you have an Alcantara steering wheel, but just look, I mean, carbon, carbon, Aston Martin, leather wrapped everywhere. And you and a lot of this stuff you don't even pay for, right? You know, like these seats are pretty much your standard seats. So you can see here, you still get some really nice attentions to detail. The Aston Martin logo, you know, Porsche would charge you money for that. Doors, everything's wrapped in, in leather. Just a, you know, Alcantara, nice looking design. Overall, a really hot car. You can see here, it comes with the uh, F1 edition plaque here. And real quick, before I show you the engine, we'll go ahead and sit in it here. This is like the 177 steering wheel that's on my Aston Martin Vantage, squared off, rounded here. Really good looking center console. Number one negative real quick. This old school infotainment system. Just listen to this card for a second. Check this out. They put it in Sport Plus. They put it in track mode for you. Listen to this. Are you are you hearing this? I mean, come on. Like that's incredible. That is unreal. Okay. This car sounds so mean, so good from that V8 twin turbo. But I was saying, the one negative here, there is no touch screen, okay? You have to do everything through the old school Mercedes uh, system. I don't understand why that is. They should absolutely have upgraded that for a $180,000 car. But let's be honest, guys, I don't know how many people are going to be really caring about this. It has Bluetooth, right? So it has Apple CarPlay. So, you know, you set it all up and you don't have to really worry about touching it, so to speak. Um, but in the end of the day, that is definitely a zonk. I will say though, you know, you have a really nice steering wheel. You have all your controls here. You have your paddles here. It feels really good. All right, real quick, we've had some cows that have decided to join us. Good morning, I appreciate it. Uh, so I just wanted to show you real quick. We have the rear here, a very nice practical car. Pretty darn sure you can get some golf clubs in here. You can see it comes with the Formula One hat. Nice little leather down, leather pouch here. You know, I mean, guys, this is, I can't even believe these things aren't going for over 200 grand. It's just so much car here. Uh, so let's get into the engine bay. By the way, if you want to open the engine, there is a latch on the other side of the car and it's way down there. It's a red latch, kind of hard to see. So uh, let me show you the, uh, the engine here. All right, here is the AMG sourced Mercedes Benz, you know, engine. V8 twin turbo. You can see very clearly the turbochargers are in the middle of the bank here. Uh, makes for almost immediate torque. There is virtually no turbo lag in this car. And also, if you guys want to open the hood on one of these, you have to kind of, it's in the dead center and you got to go to the left. And that'll release the hood latch, as you can see. That's a little annoying. I had to call the, uh, the owner to figure that one out. But I also like that they have a really nice active arrow here. You can see here, this is a, a Ram Air going into the engine. That's kind of cool. Give it some extra cooling. Uh, well, it's actually not a Ram Air into the engine. Just, I guess, helps with cooling the engine, which is kind of neat. Uh, so let's take a look here. It looks like Mr. Karen Coffey. Thank you, sir. He, uh, he did his final inspection on this car. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's your standard Mercedes AMG engine. That could be one of the negatives, right, of buying a Vantage. I, I know I've read it in the comments. It's like, why doesn't Aston have their own engines? Uh, why don't they put development into engines? Look, guys, I don't particularly think it's a negative at all. It's easy to get parts for this engine because there's so many of them out there. Uh, they're very reliable. Mercedes makes an incredible power plant, tons of performance. I mean, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. What more do you need, right? Uh, the dual clutch, uh, doesn't have a dual clutch, it actually has a torque converter uh, in this, but I gotta say it shifts almost as fast as a dual clutch as you're getting ready to see when we take this thing for a point of view drive. Um, gosh, I just gotta say, I, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand the market while this thing isn't considered one of the hottest things on the market. The way it drives, the way it looks, the interior quality, other than the infotainment system, 
Come on. It's just so much coolness and so much awesomeness for under 200 grand. And like I said, it'd be one thing if Porsches, you know, were like 190 to 200. I mean, that would make them apples to apples. But when they're going for 300, you just start to question your sanity. And you're like, man, I got to go here. There they are. Ooh, running lights. How cool. Yeah, I mean, look at these exhausts. Quad exhaust here. Big old diffuser on the back. This is pretty standard. I mean, look at look at the look at the uh, let me look at this styling guide. Isn't that cool. Uh, tire wise, for all you tire guys, these are 295 30. So these are, you know, 295 tires. I mean, actually not as wide as I thought they'd be. I will tell you this: if you got to replace these tires, that's going to be expensive. Coming up front here, I love the looks of these lights. Check that out. Your daytime running lights are just super sexy on this car. Overall, I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. Unfortunately, I don't have a tremendous amount of time. I will say real quick on the brakes, this does not have the carbon ceramic brakes. Those are optional. Uh, these are 420 millimeter discs though, so massive brakes regardless. The rears have 360. You can see here, they do have some cooling uh, that's been etched into them. Red, these, these are red uh, upgraded brakes. Those brakes do cost extra money to get them painted. Shh. You know, before I go on a point of view drive, I wanted to have a little heart to heart with my audience about this particular car. I think the reason why these cars are not so desirable is because of one very important aspect and that's called depreciation, okay? The Vantage dropped like a rock when it came out. You could have gotten a Vantage, MSRP was like 100, I think in 45, 150 grand, but they were spec easily to 170 to 190 when they came out and within two years when they were coming off lease they were being picked up for 130. i don't know about you there's not a lot of cars that you would want to buy and lose 70 to 100 thousand dollars in depending on your spec right uh, or maybe 50 000 or maybe even 40 000 that's still a lot of money where you can go and you can buy a gt3 for example and it might actually go up in value or you can buy a gt4 and it'll go up in value right or at least hold its value worst case so while that's not unusual to you know in this type of car right i mean the, Mer the mercedes amgs you know they they go down right like you know a lot of the other exotic cars the bmws of the world etc they all depreciate too you just wish i just wish that as aston martin transitions with the new ownership that they go to more limited production uh, you know, one-off cars or limited production cars where they're only gonna make 400 of these and they're only gonna make a thousand of them, right? Because I do think that'll hold the value proposition so much more because there's nothing that's gonna help the value of a car like this than exclusivity. Now, right now, there's no guarantee that they're gonna make only a set number of these. If there was 10,000 guys that walked into Aston Martin, they go to like a car lock of the world in Brentwood and they say, hey, Justin, I wanna buy one of these. What's it gonna cost me? He's gonna be happy to sell it to you right um by the way he's a great guy and i highly recommend him but in the end of the day like you don't know if there's going to be a thousand of them made you don't know if there's going to be five thousand of them made right or 500 right if there's only 500 of these things that ever come into existence i can tell you this is always going to be a desirable cool car and maybe one day it might actually be worth more than msrp but as a consumer i'm over here looking at it going hmm i don't want to spend 180 grand and it maybe be worth 150 grand i do not think that this thing is going to have the same depreciation curve as the original Vantage. I just don't. And the other thing that's really interesting is this is only $24,000 more than, a, than ordering a stock Vantage. I know you say only, it's still a lot of money, right? But the amount of performance, the amount of looks, I mean, the horsepower is not quite there, but just the, the look factor, the cool factor, all the carbon, the wing, the wheels, all the things they give you, for that $24,000, I think it's actually a good deal. And the irony is if you start specking a base level Vantage, you can easily tick the box at $180,000 plus. So you can actually get over the sticker on this one. So I'll show on the screen right now, here's the sticker for this one. And here's the sticker coming up for an Vantage that I saw on the showroom the other day. And it was a super hot Vantage that had a ton of upgrades. So the MSRP is actually over that. So you're much, much better off, I think, getting a Vantage F1 and then maybe personalizing it a few things here or there to kind of up the MSRP. You can definitely tick it over 200K. 
This one comes in, I think, around 177, and it's a really, really good spec. The guy didn't go for a bunch of extra frills. He kept the interior stock, uh, more or less, uh, just added the carbon. And frankly, that's kind of all you need. I mean, this car is hot, in my opinion. So let's get into the point of view drive and uh, see what you guys think. Okay, we're in the Aston Martin Vantage F1 here. We're gonna take a point of view drive. I'm gonna start off, I'm on a uh, back road here, just leaving where I shot that clip, uh, last few clips, guys. And uh, you know, I gotta say, this is in sport mode right now, which is its default mode. There isn't a GT mode, sport mode is just the default mode. There is sport, sport plus, and then track. And if you wanna change it, you just hit this button right here. Now I'm starting off, I wanted to show a little bit of clips here, or just, uh, just some of the clips, because this is a really, you know, exotic car. It's it's obviously very fast, etc. but it's pretty comfortable in sport mode. It's not beating me up in any way. Even though it has these massive 21 inch wheels, which I can tell you my Tesla Model S has 21 inch wheels, that thing can beat you up pretty good on a back road. You really gotta take it easy. I gotta say, I mean, we just hit a pretty bad bump right there. This thing is pretty damn, e pretty damn great, guys, I gotta say. Now, these Pirellis are throwing uh, a couple of rocks up, so I would highly encourage you to go ahead and get a PPF if you buy this car. I'm taking it really easy coming off this road. But I wanted to start off by saying the dual personality of this vehicle is pretty much incredible. It really is. And I hopefully you guys can see real well. I understand that when I do point of view drive, sometimes you end up looking at this. This is a pretty darn low slung windshield, uh, which has just always been like that for the Vantage as part of the proportions of three that Aston Martin does to give it its uh, aesthetics. But that comes with a really low roof line so your visibility out of this car isn't necessarily ideal but we're about to be on the main road here and i'll go ahead and pick up the next clip and we're going to go ahead and put it in sport plus mode we're going to take it down some of my favorite back roads and uh, we're going to show you what this thing does and let me tell you this thing is a performance car to say the least all right we're on the main road here let's go ahead and pop this thing into track mode shall we so one one click you can see here the TFT display changes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just start off with it doing automatic, okay? Let's get past these guys right here and then we'll go ahead and open her up. All right, so this is automatic mode. telling you this thing has some serious performance Woo. look how high it's holding the gear so if you put this thing on a track and you just leave it in automatic mode similar to Porsche's PDK Sport I mean it's just gonna go ahead and let you run it out all the way to red line Did you hear that backfire right there Ugh. This thing, guys, with, with the new F1 Vantage, they've added about 400 pounds of downforce to this thing, okay? 400 pounds. Woo! Oh, man, this thing feels great. Golly, this is great. Woo! This thing smokes, guys. Wow. This is way too much car for the street. I mean, if you really want to exploit this thing, you're going to have to take it to a track. I know I say that pretty much every modern car I drive these days. That's just the fact of the matter is you, do, you don't need 520 something horsepower in a car that weighs, what, 30, 3,496 pounds, I think. You just don't. So this is, this, is, <laughs> this is just a lot of power. It is rear wheel drive only. There is no front wheel drive. You know, it's got pretty much 50-50 weight balance. It might be like 52-48 or whatever, but it feels so good. You know, they've redone the dampeners, they've redone some of the front suspension, they've taken some weight out of the car here or there, although not a lot, frankly. It's still a fairly heavy car. 
Boy, I gotta say, you know, for not being a dual clutch transmission, it feels so good. God, this thing just pulls so hard. You know, you have so much torque, right? You have 505 pounds of torque. That's a ton of power. And the power brand on this thing, I mean, these Mercedes engines are so unreal. I mean, you have full torque at like 2,300 RPMs or something like that. So you get all 500 horses at the very bottom of the range. So it's just so much performance. You could pretty much have this thing in damn near any gear and overpass somebody. You could have it in like six gear and have no problems overtaking just about anybody on the highway. Oh God, this is good. This is really good. I mean, I'm, I gotta be honest, I know this doesn't probably look like I'm taking it easy, but this is taking it easy. You know, I'm just kind of giving it half throttle at best on most of these turns just to let you guys see what it does but we are still on public streets so you know we can't go crazy crazy all right i'm gonna make a right on this road here and then i'm gonna go into manual mode and i'm gonna showcase how it drives in manual mode so we'll pick that clip up all right so now we're gonna go into manual mode so in order to do that you literally just pull the throttle i don't believe you have to touch any other manual button on the car it doesn't appear that 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 is the case and I do want to make one point too. This does have auto start and stop. When I come to a complete stop, and I've only come to a complete stop once in this drive, and it did turn off the engine. All right, let's see what it feels like in manual mode. God. I mean, how is that a, you know, this has a torque converter. I mean, man. I know Aston Martin has retuned the transmission a little bit, but damn, that's great. Man, this thing just feels so good. Oh, that backfiring exhaust. That, that is a little, you know, this thing is a little immature when it comes to that, but I love it. I don't think it sounds too loud. Although I'm sure your neighbors are going to love you if you're, uh, you know, blowing through the neighborhood and trying to get the uh, exhaust backfiring. Woo. Boy, oh boy, this thing smokes, guys. You know, real quick, guys, I uh, went ahead and adjusted the dampener setting just to try it out. And uh, I got to say, the harshness of this car is still not that bad. I mean, if, if this is the harshest setting even on some of these black roads, still feels really good. I mean, you know, hey, it's not beating me up at all. Boy, I, I really like this car. I just don't, I'm, I'm looking for negatives here, but other than the potential depreciation of it, I can't think of a single negative. It's. I mean, other than the infotainment, okay? The infotainment, all right, you know, it's it's old school. It's two generations old Mercedes technology. It doesn't have touchscreen. There's really no excuse for that. So that, that would be a, a pretty big negative, but I don't really care. You know, when I get in this car, I'm gonna connect my phone to the Bluetooth. I'm gonna use my phone for Waze and for navigation and, you know, for all that. I, I'm not really even gonna need the system. The sound system is fine in this car. And then I'm just gonna drive the heck out of it. I wanna hear the engine, I wanna hear the exhaust. I like the way it's quiet in here though. You know, if you're in sport mode, this is not coming across as a, you know, an exotic car. I mean, if you get in a new GT3, those things are loud. You know, with the Cup 2 tires, they throw all kinds of rocks. They've got the thinner windshields, you know, they've got very uncomfortable carbon bucket seats. You know, that, that is a track car that's compromising. This is a, a car you could absolutely take on a track, but at the same time, you're gonna have no problem taking it out for dinner and just enjoying yourself, or even daily driving it. I think this is probably one of the most exotic cars on the market you could definitely daily drive. 
you have no problem getting in and out of the car you have no problems in traffic you have no problems with fuel economy believe it or not this thing will actually get 24 miles a gallon on the highway and i think it gets 18 around the city now driving it the way we've been driving it you know we've burned quite a bit of gas but hey that's the whole point of it you know you get in and have some fun so i'm going to drive this car to the gas station uh, get the owner some fuel and uh, I just got to give a big shout out to Alex. Uh, thank you so much for uh, letting me review this car. I'm a huge fan of, uh, of Aston Martin. I just think they're awesome. Um, I went a bit, I just went ahead and put it back into uh, you know automatic mode. And all you got to do is hold down one of these uh, either you know plus or or met. You just hold it down for two three seconds and it'll just kick it back into automatic mode, which is nice. Real quick, it does have heated seats. You push that right there. Also gives you a little audible click. If you're interested in what it sounds like to do the turn signals. I like that sound, I gotta say, it's very Mercedes. And it also has the F1 uh, right here, which uh, I don't know if I covered earlier. As far as uh, storage goes, might as well cover this since I'm talking a little bit about the interior here. You do have a little bit of uh, practicality, a little bit of, uh, you know, glove compartment here nothing crazy you can see here this is where you're going to plug in your phone for apple carplay uh and then i'm not sure if this does anything but this is nice and you also have a little cubby area here so you can put some stuff so like i said a very practical car easy to daily drive uh definitely i did want to say because i might have misspoke earlier about the fuel economy uh we're averaging 11.9 miles a gallon since uh we started this 28 mile drive so <laughs> If you're gonna go ahead and give it the beans like we've been going, yeah, you're gonna burn some gas. Guys, I wanna thank you for watching my content. I sincerely appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed my, uh, my point of view about this particular car and you enjoyed the point of view drive and learning something about it. Uh, I gotta say, I really like it. Uh, 528 horsepower, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, 3,400 or just about 3,500 pounds. Fast car, but comfortable, great build quality, nice seats, easy to get in and out of. Love the transmission. Uh, sport mode was fantastic, or Sport Plus slash track mode was great. You know, kept the kept the car really uh, flying down the street, but comfortable shifts, you know, e e even though. Manual mode was fun. The sounds of the exhaust and the intake, you know, you're just not going to get the feeling of the exotic car unless you're going to go and drive it. You know, hopefully the camera picks up some of the intake spooling and some of the exhausts. Uh, but in the end of the day, you're just going to have to go out and drive one of these things. Like I said, I think that the market is just sleeping on these things. I, I really do. Uh, I love this color. Aston Martin Racing Green is an absolutely beautiful color. So exotic. God, it's just so cool. And I gotta say, you know, if, if I didn't have, I'm about to uh, build a garage in my backyard. Um, I'm uh, making the first announcement, to, I guess on this video here, wasn't planning on that, but uh, we are gonna be building a, well, hopefully building, if the Grove will let me, a uh, pretty nice uh, garage, cause I am out of space and I need some more space for my personal vehicle. So hopefully we're gonna be able to build that in the next three months and start, start on that. So that's where uh, my extra disposable monies will be going towards, otherwise, I might just say, Alex, I, I, I might just take this uh, and sell the, van the Vanquish because, uh, man, this thing's good. Uh, but anyway, if you guys are interested in the car, let me know. It is for sale for $185. I don't think it'll be, uh, be here long. And I uh, really appreciate you watching. Uh, share this with anybody you think might enjoy the content. And uh, please give us a like and I'll look out for your comments. And hopefully YouTube actually shares the video with you because uh, uh, they are weird lately about sharing content. I'll tell you that. Uh, unless I say something off or hateful, right? Then all of a sudden it just goes and gets picked up everywhere. But it is what it is. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for watching. And that's it for me. I'm so sorry Brian could not be here. We did not have enough time to do his montage work and the driving portion. So I just did the driving portion today. So maybe we'll have him out another time and we'll do uh, some cool montage on it. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you later.